as living pieces of meat just, you know, flowing around on this big space rock, most of our actions are just bound by our instinctive nature. People are always going to be social, you know, they'll keep making babies, make better technology, get beta into GTA 6 release rumors in 2023. Sadly, we're all just, you know, creatures of habit, including myself, but, you know, with me, one thing that I'm always going to do is come on here and talk about the gaming industry as if it's a big ass reality TV show. For those of you who've been here for a while, you'll know that I've covered the Microsoft and Activision acquisition from start to finish with its series of events that were more entertaining than a Prime HBO show. But now that you know that's over and Microsoft is about to be the Kim Jong Il of gaming, I I'm feeding for a fix of that good old industry drama that I haven't had in a couple of weeks, you know. I'm scratching my neck here. And it seems like whatever higher power that's watching over me heard my prayers because just yesterday, Epic Games, the creators of Fortnite and the self-titled store that people just used to get free games, took Google to court over some old beef back in 2020 regarding the game of Fortnite. Now, unfortunately, in 2020, I was busy making videos that were some of the worst content on my channel, so you know, I didn't get to talk about what had happened between Epic Games and Google, but Basically, Epic Games didn't like the fact that their mobile version of Fortnite had been subject to extra in-app purchase fees on the iOS App Store and Google Play Store that came out of Epic Games' overall financial cut. Basically, whenever your kid wanted to buy more V-Bucks for some of that Fort swag, they basically had to pay Epic Games' fee plus whatever the App Store's fee was, which resulted in Epic Games calling this practice close to a monopoly or Google and Apple hawking up all the business in an unfair way. So because of that, you know, they basically released an update where they let players directly pay for in-app purchases and bypass the App Store's tax, which resulted in Fortnite being removed from the Google Play Store and App Store since because of, you know, obvious reasons. They couldn't get no money on no more. And that was around the time when, you know, Epic Games released that cringe trailer talking about how their game was removed from the App Store and they put free Fortnite at the end like they were about to serve a prison bid or some shit. And then they sued Apple and Google not long after, hoping to take them to court and get a ruling in their favor by removing or, you know, at least lowering the in-app purchase split to what they wanted. Now, Epic did take Apple to court in 2021, and the ruling ultimately blew up in their faces as it was mostly in Apple's favor since, you know, Epic did violate the developer agreement, placing those payment plans without Apple knowing. But, you know, they decided to appeal that case to the Supreme Court, so that case is on pause until whenever that happens. The Supreme Court has way bigger shit to deal with than the game with TikTok emotes. But now, almost however many years later, Epic has finally got their chance to duke it out with Google in the courtroom as their trial has been going on since yesterday and they've got a shot at getting a better outcome than the first court attempt with Apple. Now, you know, the case is developing literally as I'm recording this video, so if I miss any big details, you know, my bad. My thirst for industry drama can only take me so far. But as far as the main key points of the case goes up to this point, Google has argued that their 30% of profit fee is nothing more than a market fee, you know, not a monopoly fee, and that Epic pays the same split for other third-party stores listing their games like Steam and Xbox stores. Also, that it's easier to take payment through Google than other payment methods like PayPal and Stripe, so, you know, they're saying that they're really doing Epic Games a favor. So with that main argument, it's not looking the best for Epic's case of, you know, unfair price splits, even if 30% is, you know, kind of high, but where this case gets entertaining for me and you is with all the dirt that each company has on each other that they're exposing in the courtroom. My toes are curling from excitement. Epic has claimed that, you know, Google has been on some pretty shady timing with doing things like deleting messages that might have incriminated them in the courtroom since the internal Google team were caught having all of the deleted messages in Google Hangouts prior to the case, which Google claims is just a practice that they always do. No, no, I ain't saying nothing, but you know, yeah, I Epic is even convinced that Google was paying off developers from doing what Epic did with Fortnite's app payments with things like leaked million dollar investments on incentives for developers to keep their games on the Google platform, you know, and these are talks with big companies like Riot and Activision. 
Now obviously Google is dodging most of these claims in court and claiming that these companies were free to do whatever they wanted since you know they're not trying to go out bad but they also have some notable dirt on Epic Games with one of the company's leaked emails showing that the whole bypassing of Google's payment system was premeditated and that Epic CEO just said to not say anything about what they were going to do with Fortnite to Google, basically saying that we're going to backstab the ops with a surprise attack. Now we could have probably guessed that that was what the situation was, but you know, since it's good evidence in the courtroom, you can apply what Alonzo from Training Day said, you know, it's not about what you know, it's about what you can prove. And that's where we are as of right now in this court case. We're only two days in, so everything is still early and nothing is definitive on either side of the case. If Epic does manage to win this case, however, it could mean the beginning of a new age where app stores either reduce their splits with developers on what's sold in their stores, resulting in a lower in-app purchase fees or at least lower fees on the developer side. Now, whether that happens remains to be seen, but you know we'll just be keeping watch for what happens going forward in these videos. So what do you guys think about this whole, you know, Google versus Epic Games, man? Feel free to comment down below. And as always, if you like on the video, subscribe if you haven't already. And I'll see you on the next one.